Right, morning everyone. Just come out to do a little video today with uh, the new Red Shot band from Catty Shack. It's going to be available in sizes in 0 0.8, 0 0.85 and 0.9. But the size we're going to be testing today is the 0.85. It's the band I use mostly. So using the 0.85 tapered 25 to 20. I'm using it at 17 and a half centimetres for my draw length, which is 81 centimetres. Um, and that gives it a stretch ratio of 4.62. So we're looking at quite a low stretch ratio. So it's quite a high powered band. It is a warm day today, so that will change. So when the weather drops, the stretch ratio will increase a little. But like I say, today I'm using 17 and a half centimetres. Um, also gonna get, walk you through some tips on how to use the chronograph properly, how to interpret your results, how not to use it. Um, it's not all about speed, it's not a competition. You wanna be using the chronograph in a way that's useful to you to give you information about your setup. Um, it's not about getting the highest speeds you can. It's about learning your setup, which is gonna help you to increase accuracy and consistency. So um, I'm gonna grab some shots and then we're gonna stick a few, a few through the crony, show you what to do and probably what not to do and um, see what it's like. But I've been using this band for a while. Uh, I shot a weekend with it. Really happy with it, happy with the band life, happy with how it's performing. I think it's very similar to the Great White. It's a different factory, it's a different band, um, but it's a high quality band. I, I wouldn't sell any junk. So yeah, let's get some shots through this and um, see what it's doing. Right, so we're gonna get a few shots through the chronograph. Gonna be using 11 millimeter steel, which is predominantly what I use. Like I say, we're using the 0.85 band. I'm looking for speeds around the 240 feet per second mark. That's, that's the speed I find for me is the most accurate, most consistent that I can be with it. The band will perform faster. The band isn't maxed out. Um, I'll show you my anchor and where the band maxes out to. Here's my anchor. The band will max out near my ear. So there's plenty more, there's plenty more in it to be had from it if you like a stronger setup. But like I say, I find 240 feet per second about right for me. Um, obviously a warm day today. Uh, in the winter, when the temperatures drop, band performance drops. So in the winter, I step up to a stronger band. Because what I want to try and do is try and maintain that 240 feet per second year round. That's why a chronograph can help you out with a lot of things, um, accuracy, accurately, or accuracy, accurately, whichever way you want to put it, and consistency wise. Um, by learning that I like 240 feet per second, I can then go back to the chronograph year round if I need to and check that my bands are performing like that. Because if they're performing the same year round, my holdover is going to be the same at every single distance. And that's what's going to help you build consistency because everything's going to be the same. If you're shooting 240 feet per second in the summer and then going to the winter and your bands are dropping to 220 feet per second, obviously your, you know, your holdovers have changed. So your, your sight pictures are different and you're constantly sort of relearning. So by maintaining them around the 240 feet per second mark, I know my, uh, my setup's shooting the same all year round. So let's get a few shots through the crony. Also, another point to mention is when you're shooting through the chronograph, what you want to try and do is keep your timing the same. Shoot through the chronograph as you would shoot at a target. It's no good going in there and ripping them off, not, not anchoring and just trying to get the highest speed you can because it's irrelevant. Uh, it's not how you shoot. You need to shoot through that, how you shoot a target or how you shoot an animal, whatever it is you're doing. Um, obviously, if you shoot, draw and release them, fine. Shoot through the chronograph um, like that. But with an anchored style, you need to shoot through the chronograph as you would shoot a target. So I'm looking for speeds fairly close to, close together, within a few feet per second of each other. What I don't want to be seeing, or anybody doesn't want to be seeing, is jumping from 240 to 230, to 250, to 245. You're looking with, you want to be getting it within two or three feet per second of each other to, to, to maintain that consistency. Because obviously consistent speeds gives you a consistent hold over, consistent drop, um, and consistency in your shooting. So let's get a few shots through here. I'm going to shoot, like I say, shoot it roughly with the timing, or with the timing, that I would take a shot. 240.5, because someone's bound to say it. <laughs> 239.7, that's 0.8 of a feet per second different. 239.8 so I can't remember what the first one was but the biggest difference we had I think was 0.7 or 0.8 feet of a second so that's not even one foot per second um, you'll get factories factories you get air rifles from the factory that won't even perform that consistently so I'm gonna turn that off and we're gonna keep bleeping so that's the kind of thing you want to be 
that's the way you want to be shooting through a chronograph. You want to try and learn how to shoot with good timing, which will then build good consistency. Like I say, there's no point ripping them off. As it's not a competition. I could get more speed from this band if I wanted to, but I know the best speeds for me are around 240. So hopefully that's give you a little insight into how to use a chronograph properly. It's not a competition. Um, how it can help you building some consistency in your shooting and a little insight into what the band will do. Right, now it wouldn't be a catapult video with it without having a shot on it. So I picked up a stone with a flat bottom. It's quite a thick stone. Hopefully you can see it on the camera. It's got a nice flat bottom to it, quite thick. Let's shoot that with an 11 millimeter steel and uh, see what it will do. camera's about 10 meters away I would think so I'm not even going to be 10 meters away from this I'm going to be standing in front of the camera so I'm probably going to be about nine meters but hopefully let's have a look at the camera I think you can see that stone there you can see focus it in on it oh, typical it's right in the bloody shade I think oh let's get a shot of it see if we can blow it up Mash. What's that back? I think, uh, I think I've got some smoke off that. Stand back from the camera so you can see me. Um, yeah, that was going to be 25 20, same setup as I've been shooting on the chronograph, and 11 millimeter steel blowing up thick stones. <laughs> so, hopefully, you can see the power in it as well at just at 240 feet per second. That's about 11 and a half foot pounds of power destroying stuff. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. I was just thinking about doing another shot on a bigger stone then, but I'm not going to push me luck. <laughs> um, hopefully, catch you again soon. Cheers.